It seems like a long time government to fight Rasta. I bet some of you didn't know that Rastafarians in Jamaica were once beaten, tortured, had their locks cut off and even killed by the order of the Jamaican government. How many of us know about the Coral Guard massacre that took place in Montego Bay, Jamaica, where dozens of bearded men were beaten and killed? A Rasta was treated brutality underneath that government because from is a Rasta said, you must go to prison or you die. Before we go into that, I could jump back in a little history of the Rastafarian movements in Jamaica. Rising from the proliferation of Ethiopianism and Pan-Africanism, Rastafarianism took root in Jamaica following the coronation of Ethiopian Emperor Eli Selassie in the 1930s. A spiritual movement based on the belief in Selassie's divinity. Its followers congregated around preachers like Leonard Owell, who founded the first prominent Rastafarian community on 400 acres of land in Sligoville, St. Catherine in the 1940s. Anyway, the story of Leonard Owell goes a long way. But it was said that Owell was preaching doctrines that was considered by the authorities as anti-church and anti-government. The political establishment feared that Rastafarians were the most potent in overthrowing the government. So under the disguise of illegal cannabis, would randomly beat, injured, jail, and even kill some people from that stock at will. Me trip out so, me see them, me see soldiers like sand green. Go back, me say, Marcin, Marcin, police and soldiers out there, you know. I realize, then lick down the door, and then go in and then start murdering and then drag him out. The guy that murdered me, man. <laughs> all the women in the piece of chicken, all them can have it there. And then they showed them for me, I said, them, them beat me, beat me to kill me. I was tried half naked because they beat me short off. Even the famous Peter Tosh was once brutally beaten by the police force because of his weed use. Peter Tosh was just a whisker away from death where he had to self-isolate for over six years before he could have returned to his social life. Anyway, the story of Coral Gardens goes like this. A man named Rudolph Franklin and several Rastas were squatting peacefully on a land in the Coral Gardens a part of Montego Bay that the Jamaican government was planning to make into a tourist-only area, which means it was a no-go area for the Rastafarians. The government and landlord viewed the Rastafarians as an obstacle to their goal. So them start to send in police to try to evict them from the land. During one such incident in 1961, Rudolph Franklin was attacked by the police and shot over five times and left it dead and informed. He was later taken to the hospital where he must do plastic surgery upon his chest. And the doctor then tell him, say, boy, once the plastic surgery rotten, your wounds them are going to open up and you're going to dead. After him go through all of that, as the man come out of the hospital, Stop! the police them run in, Put your hands on your head. arrest the man for the illegal possession of marijuana and sentence the man to six months in a jail. By the time the man come out of jail, the man vex, the man get bitter. Brother, the man get bitter and say, yo, he might go take revenge. 
for the injustice with the state and the landlord we name Edward Fowler, who we attempt to evict him from the land. The man go take revenge for that. Them treat the man bad brother, them couldn't even wait till the man heal. Couple years on half on Holy Thursday, April 11, Franklin and a group and bridging them decided, say, yo, we're going to burn down the gas station, what them call Douglas Petrol Gas Station. So him circle it and him burn it down, catch it a fire. Now, I'm not sure if the landlord where did I try to evict him from the land who owned the gas station. That's why I'm going to go burn it down him and him bridging them. But anyway, it was said that the late Prime Minister, Sir Alexander Bustamante, went to Montego Bay, him and the police force and the military them, and him said, bring in all Rastas, dead or alive. From is a Rasta, he said, you must go to prison or you die. Because then catch you all rest up and you have little ear and thing and say must shoot first and inquire after. He said the jail can't hold them. Throw them from Bogil. Bogil is a cemetery in Mobile. Go and mention the carrying all rest that dead or alive. Either their head cut off their head or carry them in or kill them and carry them in. No charge. My name is Selborne A. Reed. I'm an ex-Jamaican policeman, retired detective, inspector. Whether you are black, white, yellow, or blue, professor, or just anybody. Even if you wear a status, if you wear a beard as a little status symbol, you'd be regarded as a Rasta man, you would be beaten and taken to the police station and doctor. So on Good Friday, 1963, the police force and the military force rush out and round up over 150 Rasta men. Some of them get beaten, tortured. Some locks get cut off. Some of them killed. And then arrest the others and throw them in a jail. Here Buster Manti and Harley Regine come down to say, kill Rastafara. And they grab me and they put a rope right round me, round me, you know, make sure that they rope me, go down foot, heavy head. And they, they tally me like bananas. My policeman say, man, you know, one long gun in this, this way with the lock one gun. Run! And he told the two head, boom! One of the sister bend it and scream out. He said, scream, scream out. Not not me, I said, no, wait till I'm good on, sir. I don't want to deal. You can take an eye now. Murder an eye. Do many things with an eye. In 2017, Prime Minister Andrew Owness in Parliament apologised to the Rastafarian community for the atrocities committed against them in 1963 at the Coral Gardens area. It is my duty to apologize to the victims of the Coral Gardens incident. I'm like, oh, you promise so that event or any other event in that matter will never reoccur in Jamaica. Now, people, if you never know about the Coral Garden massacre in Montego Bay, Jamaica, no, you know.